It's the Hero Show. Welcome to the Hero Show, everybody. Starring the irrepressible Andrew Bernstein and the redoubtable Robert Begley. I am Andrew Bernstein, and you are indubitably Robert Begley. How are you doing this afternoon, Robert? I'm doing good today, Andy. Although it's one of the darkest days in American history that mm -hmm. will open up with the turnaround of the events after uh, the Pearl Harbor attack is the heroism that we're going to celebrate today. So that makes me happy to recognize yes. some of these names that should be part of uh, schooling that every kid uh, should know the names of some of these heroes we'll be talking about today. Absolutely. A day that will mm -hmm. live in infamy. Uh, that was FDR, wasn't it? I think you know, FDR said, said that. that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not my favorite president. In you know, he was a disaster in some ways, such as the depression and in dealing with the communists. But he he was an able wartime leader against fascists. Yes, he was. And uh, you know, yes, he was. Him, we have to give him uh, you know credit for that. Uh, so and imperialism. So yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, against the mm -hmm. imperial Japanese regime. Brutal, brutal regime. Yes. You know, my, I mean, my God. You know, at, at the end, of, we're going to discuss, uh, uh, as part of the discussion today, we're going to discuss the two Midway films. And the graphic yes. at the end of, of the remake said that the Japanese killed, murdered 250,000 Chinese civilians for helping Doolittle and, and his crew uh, escape. Amazing. I, I, Amazing. It's unbelievable how brutal that regime was. I mean, the rape mm -hmm. of their king is is infamous. Although they don't teach history anymore, and so a lot of people don't know yeah. that. But yeah, this, is a, this was a brutal regime, and like Hitler's regime, and the Allied commanders, FDR, Truman, and Winston Churchill, were absolutely right. There would be no negotiated settlement that left these regimes in power. Unconditional surrender was the only acceptable outcome. Yes, and also we'll talk about which you don't get in some of these excellent films, the ideas behind, the right. ideas behind the American view towards war and the Japanese, in this case, the imperialist Japanese. So they were a militant society that were effectively, they had this religion of Shinto and they considered mm -hmm. the emperor a deity and they right. were brainwashed from childhood uh, through, through adulthood, in the military, but not just the military, civilians, that this the emperor could do no wrong and they would die for him. They, they would willingly right. die for him. That was, the, and that's a powerful way to be brought up in the sense that your life is nothing but the emperor or the state or whatever. There's always something, whenever your life has no value, which is the opposite of the Americans, then bad things will happen and and brutal things will happen as you as you just mentioned dandy uh what they did yeah. in nanking with china yes ab absolutely uh but uh you know the, the the late great john david lewis who wrote you know, brilliantly on, yes. on on a lot of these wars and you know, nothing less than victory pointed out you yes. know the american occupation of japan after after victory was achieved uh i think i think uh, John Lewis uh, had had a memo from you know MacArthur was uh, the command commander in Japan commanding the American mm -hmm. occupation had a memo from the Secretary of State saying you know insofar as individual Japanese citizens wanted to you know engage in the Shinto religion that's their right none of our business but state Shinto is finished we're going to put an end yes. to it we're going to we're going to dismantle it yes. we're taking it down. This you know this horrible religion that that you that you that you just mentioned, where the emperor is is a god and, ja and Japan is destined to to rule the Pacific and rule over your know, law, have a mm -hmm. gigantic empire and brutally conquer anybody who gets in its way. That religion we we got to dismantle, and uh, that's that yes. was exactly the right exactly the right approach to take in the yeah you know in the in rebuilding Japan and in rebuilding it on a much more rational basis with much more respect, you know, end that religion of the state, uh, have much more respect for individual rights and so on and so forth. And look mm -hmm. at Japan today. I mean, Japan is a thriving, yeah. uh, basic, basically free society. Basically free. And we'll, again, we'll talk about the end of the war. We're going up to Midway yeah. Yeah. today. Right, in the right. sense that that's the that's the event but setting the context andy you're right and also the racism 
where in the in the the when you joined the military, the playbook that they had, whites were inferior. They were considered inferior to the Japanese race. And of course, even all the Asian cultures had their own little, you know, tribal societies. So as you said, what, so let's talk about the juggernaut that became Japan early on. They, the, the rape of Nanking, they take China, they take um, uh, Hong Kong, they go down the coast to all the places near them. And then uh, by the December- Malaya and, and Singapore, right? Singapore, Malaya, Singapore. The Japanese, yeah just one by one uh the americans so coming up to december 7th 1941 america was isolationist did not want to get involved with the war they they, they and they're going through a government caused depression so they don't even have that much in the way of military uh, especially like the 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 navy so pearl harbor was not you know they were not on the high alert necessarily that they that they should have been they didn't have the manpower they 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 were certainly caught unprepared and we'll talk a little more about the the details of that but japan is a juggernaut and their plan is let's attack pearl harbor let's weaken america so we have the entire pacific so i have a, a, a little yeah, globe right. here and this is japan here and America is all the way over here. Uh, Hawaii, similarly, is is in the middle. And what we're going to talk about today is called Midway, which is literally mid, the middle of Pacific Ocean, and, and it's right at the international date line. So yeah, it's just rough, so you get a little bit halfway, of a bearing. It's roughly halfway between the North American and Asian continents, right? That's Midway. right, roughly halfway, a, th a full thousand miles away from um, Pearl Harbor. So even right. far for America, and it's a couple of tiny islands. America didn't have much there. They they did have some military uh, possessions, but after Pearl Harbor comes in, there are six carriers. The Japanese come in December seventh, uh, destroy all of America's battleships. Fortunately, America didn't have their carriers. Just for some uh, terminology here, carrier is the biggest thing. In fact, this image that uh, we see here. It's where you could have more than a hundred planes take off. So that's like the biggest, the, the, the biggest, most powerful aspect of uh, yeah. The, and and, least, and um, we should we should war we should point out right. We should point out Robert Billy Mitchell, who we could do a hero show whole hero show episode on ourselves. You know, a U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, U.S. Army, right? I think it was U.S. Army pilot had established years before that air power was 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 the the coming the coming power it, it would sink sea yes. power and, and a lot of people yes. in america didn't accept it but at other countries around the world they recognized you know the importance right. of, of air power and so especially given the vastness of the pacific this was going to be a carrier yes. war this was going to be decided yes. from the air and given the vastness of the pacific you needed carriers because the distances were too vast for land-based mm -hmm. planes to you know to fly back and forth so this was going to be a carrier war conspiracy theorists like to think that fdr knew there was an attack coming he wanted it to come to get america into the war and just conveniently had the american carriers out at sea i don't know if there's any credibility to that or not maybe it's just sheer luck sometimes luck plays a role in in these battles and these wars it may have been just luck did luck play a role yes oh for sure at midway it certainly did uh yeah and, you know and, but anyway that god the u.s carriers were not at pearl when the when the japanese uh attack otherwise otherwise the united states could not afford a, a naval war yes absolutely andy and so after december 11th what happens? The, the, first of all, Japan thinks America will not have the will to fight. They think their g goal is to break our spirit in the Pacific. Right. And the opposite happens. Okay. Worst attack, more than 3,000 Americans die. Worst attack on American soil. Uh, certainly, you know, 9 11 passed that, although this was directly an act of war by an. A, 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 uh, country Japan already had the military. They had the the pact with Germany and Italy, uh, so they were allied with each other against United States. And, and 
again, whatever was happening in Europe, the U.S. was not involved with yet. We were helping out like with with supplies and with money, but not necessarily militarily. But this changed the game. So Roosevelt yeah. declared. He, actually, he didn't declare. He asked Congress properly. He followed the proper procedures. You're right, Roosevelt. This was one of his shining things. As much as I, uh, similar to you, I don't like him. During World War II, on the military front, he, uh, I think he did the right thing. And war is declared. Now it's going to be a matter of American uh, industrialism. Uh, build and and the free the part of the free market where all these they could build these ships build all these machines of military versus the the Japanese state that is all that's just run by the government and and all of these uh, soldiers and and naval officers and and um, pilots they're doing they're ready to die for their country so that's the that's the setup here post. Uh, Post um, Pearl Harbor. Yeah, no, no, another right. Another thing. Another thing we should point out, and we discussed the Midway films. They they point out yes. in the, in the Midway films that the Japanese attack left the American oil supply intact at, they missed at it. Pearl Harbor. That's right. They yeah. missed it. They did mm -hmm. not target it, uh, which was which was a major error. Uh, so major so error. Yeah, left left the left very lucky on the American part because the Americans couldn't defend it, but the Japanese didn't yes. attack it, and you know obviously yes. obviously they, they they should have. And I wanted to say one other thing about about FDR. If I lump Imperial mm -hmm. Japan loosely as a fascist power, you know, together with their with their allies, FDR right. recognized the dangers of fascism and that America had mm -hmm. to step in and help defend free countries was preeminently yeah. our own freedom against the fascists. Unfortunately, he did not recognize the similar, the equivalent danger of communism, which was, you know, yes. it was a major error on his part. But against against the fascist mm -hmm. powers, yeah, I do think he was an effective uh, uh, wartime leader. But you know, one one other point on this, Robert, because America's mm -hmm. enemies are always talk about what an imperialist, you know, power and mili you know, militaristic power America is. Mm -hmm. A couple of points. First of all, the American Empire was what the Philippines for forty years. <laughs> It was, it, was a, yes. it was a paltry empire. Uh, yes. but, but second of all, the United States has been woefully unprepared for every war it's ever been involved in. And that, is, that included World War II. Uh, you know, and then, you know, then, then mm -hmm. we, 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 you needed a massive ramp up to get ready for the war. And by the way, Admiral Yamamoto, who is, you know, a brilliant uh, naval strategist for, for, for Japan, he didn't want to go to war with America, right? He he knew the United States. He'd gone to school at Harvard. He had traveled mm -hmm. all over the country. He knew in America's industrial might. And he and he, he yes. said, Japan cannot win a protracted war against the United States. Their mili their, their industrial mm -hmm. power is too great. And the fighting yes. spirit of the American people, you don't want to underestimate it. You, you know, you attack them. You think they're going to surrender because you inflict one major defeat on them? It's 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 not going to happen. And in the the and midway the, remake in, 20, in 2019, what's that? Go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, do you in, remember in, his quote in the film? Yeah, it's, in, in, it's, it's, in, yeah, yeah. I just saw it last night. You know, for like the tenth or ninth <laughs> time, I think I saw that movie because I loved yeah. the, the the 2019 remake of, of, of Midway when he said, we, we, we have awakened the sleeping giant and filled him with a terrible resolve. And that, I, that I, I, I don't it. know if that's, a, if that's an accurate quote from Yamamoto, but it sounds like him. And I it's think so. And it's certainly true. Yeah, I actually think it true. is. Yeah. It's certainly mm -hmm. true. Yeah. And um, yeah. So American, American industrial power. And of course, you know, the fighting spirit, the, the, the Monday, December 8th, 1941, I remember my dad, my mom and dad telling me, you yeah. know, when I was uh, when I because they lived through it. The recruiting stations yeah. around the country had lines out the door, Everybody. down the block, yeah. and around the corner. That's right. You know, thousands and thousands yeah. and thousands of Americans enlisting to help defend the mm -hmm. country against a first Imperial Japan, and then of course Nazi Germany. So yeah, yeah. Yamamoto. What was, what was, there was another quote from him that I know is debated. Uh, 
that they, that he might have said that the reason you know the reason you can't invade the United States is because behind every rock or every tree or every blade of grass there's an American with a gun or so, something like I, I like heard that. that too, especially once you got in inland. Yeah, exactly. And that's why they knew they could never c conquer, so to speak, yeah. uh, America. But one important point, Andy, that you touched on, and, and I mentioned earlier, the industrial might. Japan didn't. They didn't even create oil. They, they couldn't produce oil themselves. So what they had to do was seize places that uh, produced oil, which is a far, it's far less reliable to, to count on that as opposed to the United States who could produce uh, oil ourselves. And uh, so after, um, after Pearl Harbor, now we're into early, early uh, 1942, by the end of December, um, Roosevelt names William Nim uh, Admiral uh, Nimitz, Chester A. Uh, Nimitz, as the, he's the Admiral Commander-in-Chief of the Pacific. Basically, he names him as the guy. Uh, Woody Harrelson plays him in the film you're talking yes. about, Andy, and, and we'll yes. talk about, we'll distinguish fact and fiction, but uh, yeah, and, really and, and Henry an Fonda, man. Henry, Henry Fonda in the original. Uh, That's right. right, Henry Fonda in the nineteen seventies uh, uh, version, and we'll even contrast the two the two films. Yeah, I, two, I have to admit, before movies. you suggested Midway last week, Andy, I hadn't seen either of the movies, and I've read about three or four books, including uh, including uh, Nimitz's story. And it's fascinating. It's just, it is absolutely yeah, fascinating. Is. So this, and underrated, you know, when we think World War II, mostly we think of the European front and because, and, and the two bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But once Nimitz comes in, he, he, he makes some critical decisions. He's a fighter. He's, he, oh, he, he has a reputation as a fighter and two key um, uh, points that he's looking for is because now at this time japan is going down down the coast and they take over um the philippines and macarthur is he's gotta he's gotta get out of it he says well, i'll be back in effect but i the shall morale return is very right? low i shall return I yeah shall the return, morale right? is very low and they're threatening to take over uh australia which is certainly important to the australians but to america as well and Nimitz sees the value. I don't know in, how important uh, freedom is to yeah. the Australians anymore, Robert. But <laughs> unfortunately, Australia has become yeah. something of a totalitarian yes. state. But I don't think Sad, I don't think they, the sadly. government could have imposed. Right, I don't think the yeah. Australian government could have imposed that on the Australian people eight years ago. They were still a freedom. They were still yes. freedom loving yes. people back back then. Uh, and you're right. Japan was yeah. on the march. Japan was on the they, they were, they, yeah, they, they were, were juggernaut. They were, on a, yeah, they were mm -hmm. right. They were an unstoppable force, and that's um, it's it, it's shown well in the Midway remake, where it was Aaron yes. Eckhart, I think, plays uh, Jimmy Doolittle, yeah, and the the Doolittle raid, you know, and which is an extraordinary. So let's story talk about Doolittle. So now, yeah. we're, if we go with the timeline, yeah. uh, early on, yeah, that was, so that January, was April. They, that was April. Yeah, so it was April, April of forty two. Uh, uh, so everything before April was going Japan's way. There was yeah, no, everything, everything. they were untouchable. Every, everything. They were untouchable. Everything. The Jap yeah, including against the United States. They hammered Pearl Harbor. They conquered yes. the Philippines. They conquered Wake Island. And of course, against the yep. British Empire, they, they took Guam. Hong Kong, Malaya, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. Singapore. They were, they were, the you're illusions. right, Juggernaut's a good word. Yeah, you're right. Juggernaut's a good word. They were which is Alaska, the, the, the right. western part of Alaska. So they had, they had a lot of American um interest and uh and so do little he volunteers yeah, this and was, again this, the hero this was an amazing in himself yeah, let me go I, of course i remember the spencer Ch tracy movie 13 yeah. seconds over tokyo 30 30 uh, seconds over tokyo right? oh, 30 seconds yeah right. over tokyo yeah. and so the yeah, i read that book so when he goes I was into a kid. china i read that i read that book mm -hmm. when i was a kid because i love all these hero stories okay and then you know so, yeah yeah saw the movie but it's an amazing so, story because because these are army planes these are b-25s they're too big to fly off of carriers they certainly can't land yes. on a carrier but they didn't have enough fuel yeah. to get back to the carrier anyhow but they had to train 
you know, I don't know how long to be, to be able to get those big old planes that need a long land-based runway to be able yeah. to take off from yeah. carriers. These were army pilots, you know, the army F was pilots flying off. Was it Hornet? Was it Hornet? I think that 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 they flew off of. To, uh, I to, think it was the Hornets, uh, yeah, attack, the, yeah, the carrier. To attack Tokyo. Yeah. You know, the, the idea was, and I, you know, guy at the top gets the credit or gets the blame. He's had, got to take responsibility. So we give the credit to FDR yeah. here uh, mm -hmm. because at the very least he okayed it. And that is we have to throw a blow. Morale here is yeah. so low in America yeah. and in our, in our armed yes. forces. Japan thinks they're invincible. We, what is, what is, uh, what does Nimitz say in the in the Midway remake? We have to let the Japanese know what it takes, what it feels like to get hit. You know, yes. you know what it feels yes. like for them to get hit. And the yes. Japanese homeland was supposed to be impenetrable. And and yet, yeah. you know, these guys- these Had never been doing. touched. They had never been touched before then, and they were you know, impregnable. I'm actually not sure Roosevelt knew about Doolittle because they oh, kept is, it is secret. Right? Uh, they kept from, it secret the, because the everybody wanted it. Even, it everybody wanted to do it, you know. <laughs> I, I think. I, I, okay, I could be wrong, but I. I, I, I don't think know. It's, I don't, I don't, it's I don't, I don't, but, but so, yeah, you could be. You could be right. But the the raid had little or no military value, but it had tremendous psychological value. Psychological right? value. Of, yeah, inspired that was the, the Americans so now, and and to demoralize yep. the Japanese. You you're not invincible, buddy. You're going against no. the U.S. Navy now. In, the, in this case, the U.S. Army Air Force. You're not invincible. You want to start a war? You know, all right, be careful what you wish for because, then the because next, you're going to get hit. Yep. So the next important one was a month later was May when- oh, Wait, hold uh, on a second. Let's stay with Doolittle for a second. Yeah. Stay, wait, stay sure. with Doolittle for a second because they, they, they didn't yeah. have enough, you know, gas to be able to get back to the carriers. Uh, and, I, yeah. and by the way, mm -hmm. Bull Halsey was still, you know, he unfortunately out of action for Midway. We but got him next. Commanding. We got hit. We yeah. yeah. Oh, we got Bull Halsey next. Bull Halsey got commanded. <laughs> Go ahead, Elliot. Put it. Put the picture uh, up. Bull Halsey, the great. Yeah, yeah. There we go. The the great American <laughs> uh, admiral was commanding. You know the task force that that attacked Japan. Yes. You know, and I, and um, they you know they they got as close to the Japanese coastline as they could. But they knew Doolittle didn't have enough gas to get back to the carriers. So they, the idea was to land in China. And, you know, and they did, and a lot of them survived. A lot of those guys survived. And they had, they, they, every year they had a reunion after that, you know, Doolittle's yeah. Raiders until, until the yeah. last one, one died at a very, very mm -hmm. old age, like a, a couple mm -hmm. of years ago. Because this was 1942 we're talking about. Yeah. But, you, you know, the Japanese regime robert was so brutal they they they, they showed the graphic at the end of the midway yeah. you know remake yeah. that the japanese murdered two hundred and fifty thousand chinese civilians but for, for aiding doolittle's men to 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 escape 250 more than more than hiroshima nagasaki you know like if you think oh, yeah, on the scale yeah, right. it, it's it's like what is worse you know for those who just count death you know without without cause it, it's it's awful it's awful so yeah. halsey yeah. admiral halsey who i first heard through paul mccartney's song uh hands across the water right admiral halsey notified me <laughs> that's the first time I, <laughs> I ever heard of him and uh he takes he takes the u.s down to the coral sea which is out just north of australia and that's the tide is starting to turn there a little bit. You know, it's kind of a stalemate uh, battle over there. And the next one is Midway. The idea of Midway. They know the Japanese are planning something. And this is this is um, uh, now we go to Roseford. Now we go to the the the, the mindset. Yeah, well, let's, which is not well, just let's pure. Go, let's go, let's 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 go to Yamamoto for a second because okay, you know, yeah. he's a great mm -hmm. naval strategist. He realized this was a carrier war. You know, the battleships yes. were outmoded. Billy Mitchell had proven that air power would mm -hmm. sink those ships. Uh, the vast distance of the Pacific means you know, the air the air battles were going to be you know decided by carrier based planes, and the American carriers were still intact. Uh, the attack on the Doolittle raid that finally convinced the Japanese high command. At least I'm going by the movie versions here, Robert. Correct me if I'm wrong. I know you read. I know Sorry. you read the, <laughs> Go the, ahead. the books. <laughs> this. In, the, in the movie versions, you know, the Doolittle raid convinced the Japanese high command that Yamamoto was right. The American carriers had to be destroyed. 
that was the purpose of the attack on Midway. Yes. That was to lure That's the right. American carriers into battle. They came, the Japanese came with four aircraft carriers. They came with a powerful, powerful Four fleet. of the six, yeah. four of the six that went to, uh, went to Pearl Harbor. So yeah. they are planning this massive attack. They want to draw, as you said, draw America towards Midway so that they can go and further, you know, knock them out, occupy Midway. Uh, they want and to then, sink the carriers. You got to sink the carriers, sink the carriers and, gonna, and then go back to Pearl Harbor. Yeah. So it was everything. Yeah. It was all out. Yeah. They put all their chips. Okay. They're putting all their chips into this uh, battle. And now we go to the code crackers. So one of the reasons Nimitz gets a ton of credit is because uh, he right. had, and it's it's beautifully told in the in the newer Midway story. Yes. Andy, yes. as as you said, so Joe Roseford, There's actually a good book called Joe Roseford's War, and he was the code cracker, uh, the 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 leader working down in a basement wearing you know furry slippers he he was certainly one of a kind who did who didn't who went by his mind and was not uh a lot of the hierarchy in the military nobody in washington really liked him and this is where again i give nimitz credit and mm -hmm. layton uh, yeah, is absolutely. also edwin layton in the uh, right. film is, is perfectly portrayed as backing him and so he's saying, guess what? They're, the, the Japanese are going to attack Midway. And, and they're like, well, how, how do you know? And uh, one of the great analogies in the, he says, I, I'm not certain. And we go to the idea, Andy, of certainty. How can you tell when you're a you know, cryptologist and you only have 10% of the words that you're trying to put together? And the way he explains in, in, in the movie is, well, you know a wedding's going to happen. You don't know exactly where and when, but you see the floor is coming in. The band is setting up and there's chairs over here. And it's like, I can't oh, yeah, tell you exactly is, when. The hall is, the hall is rented. The hall is rented. Right. <laughs> yeah, it, right. it's a perfect analogy because that's exactly what he's doing, painting this picture of what's happening in Midway. And what, they, what do they do to get proof that even Washington will understand? they uh send out this message saying the water tanker is is broken the japanese AF, get that at AF, at AF, right? which they, he, he calls af uh midway right. that's right they, they're not right. sure that that uh, yeah. they think it's the aleutians alaska up uh directly north the, the western tip of alaska yeah, it's a brilliant, brilliant intelligence ploy. They knew the attack was yes. going to come at AF because they, they were intercepting the Japanese uh, messages and they, they could decode some of them. But they didn't know where AF was. So like you said, they yeah. they knew the Japanese were listening to American traffic. So they put out the message that the, the, the water purification plant or something midway was was mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. And then they got they got feedback from from the Japanese, you know, AF water yeah. plant is out or, you know, or, or something like that and then they knew that af the target knew was midway they, yeah they knew it was yeah. midway. and you mentioned you, you mentioned edward layton he's a key player here uh because he yes. was u.s naval intelligence you know in the in the movie again i don't know in, in the remake but both of these movies are great by the way uh the, yeah but um in the in the remake the, the 2019 film they show you know, so Layton as as having warned the previous commander at Pearl Harbor to be more prepared that the Japanese yes. were going to attack. I, I don't yeah. know if that's accurate or not, but it's. Uh, oh yeah, it, it was. It, oh, it yeah, was. Okay, mm -hmm. good, good, because it builds Layton's credibility. And he, you're right, he backs Roachford to the hilt. And it was Layton, I think, in the 1980s who wrote the who wrote 40 years later who wrote a book, you know, on this on uh, you know on I the was happy there. That, that, yeah, was, was that was that the yep, name? Of, his book. That was that name of Layton's It's called book? I Was There. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I never read it. And but yeah, late. And the thing Layton is, he says I. He says I oversaw the biggest intelligence failure in U.S. history. So he's got his neck is on the line, and it's what I like is how Nimitz in the film, Andy. He says he tells him I should have been more firm in my, you know, in my I I could have been more forceful or more persuasive, and Nimitz says you'll do you i guess you learn your lesson right and then later on in the film that's exactly yeah, says, what plays out they yeah, foreshadow yeah, he, so yeah, many yeah. excellent yeah, points it's, yeah you know? it's like woody woody harrelson as nemitz does a great job in the remake he's so fabulous in, in yeah. The, yeah in the future stand your ground you know stand there you that's know right. make your points and he does 
Leighton does. He says, Roachford yeah. is right. I'll stake my reputation on it. The yep. target is midway. And Nimitz, like a like an Ayn Rand kind of hero, Howard Raw kind of guy, tells Washington basically, Washington disagrees. They think the attack's coming elsewhere. Yes. And Nimitz goes yep. with his own judgment. He doesn't doesn't follow, you know, what Washington is telling him. He goes with his judgment. He trusts yeah. Leighton, who trusts Roachford, uh, and the code breakers. And and we're gonna we're, we're we we're, we're gonna go with the assumption that the attack is at midway. We're gonna lure the Japanese fleet into a trap, and we're gonna have it. And that's yeah. you know, Nimitz goes with his own judgment on this. Not you know doesn't follow the DC. The easiest thing to do is just follow the chain of command. Then then you, then you don't yeah. take you, know, you don't have to take blame for a disaster. That's right. right. But yep. Nimitz stands on his own yeah. judgment and and and. Uh, and he he agrees with Leighton and Roachford, and it's a it's a major uh, point in the in the battle, winning the battle at Midway, being prepared to fight Japan. Mm-hmm. 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 And so the stage is set within, uh, with both sides preparing, and yeah, well, um, we should say we should say some. Unfortunately for William, how about the prediction? Bull-Horsey. Five minutes, five degrees off, and five minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 You're yeah, up yeah. by five minutes yeah. and five degrees. Yeah, there's late. Yeah, well, that Spruance, Admiral Spruance is in command of the carrier force because Bull Halsey, unfortunately, has some skin disease and shingles. And yeah, says, he's got the yeah, shingles. Mm-hmm. Nimitz, you know, say your you, your best admiral, your best fighting admiral's yeah. got to go to go to the hospital. Nimitz orders him to go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. But Spruance, the uh, his his replacement, um, who was was it Halsey himself who? Who recommended Spruance as as his replacement because Spruance wasn't. I a don't carrier. know, but it was a good choice. Let's put it this way: it, yeah. was, it was a good Spru- choice. As, as- Spruance' specialty was in in I think in in cruisers, not in carriers. But I think it was mm-hmm. Halsey who recommended him, and Spruance does a very good job as a fill in, yeah. you know, uh, pinch hitting for yes. for Halsey at, at at midway. But yeah, he says to in the in the preparations he. He says this is too vague. He's I need you know. He says he tells late. I need something more concrete. And then late says, "All right." He's like, "We're just guessing here. This is guesswork." He says the Japanese are going to attack you know from this angle on this day at this hour, June fourth, you know, seven a.m. Yeah. You know, forty-five degree angle from yeah, yeah from well, midway. Well, yeah. come from the northwest. Yeah, from, from, lat- <laughs> from latitude, longitude, blah blah blah. You know, and he yeah. battles all this stuff off. It's just guesswork, and it turns out he's very, very, very close. He's off by five minutes and five degrees, and he's like, uh, you, I'll, "I'll try to be, more, I'll try to be more accurate next time." Okay, right, right. So, so many heroes. There's so many heroes, and we haven't even discussed yeah. the pilots yet. Which is let's uh, go to the pilots. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dick. Yeah, well, uh, I was, was, yeah. Well, so what, before we even get there, mm-hmm. I just want for people who watch who haven't, if you haven't seen any of the movies, here's what I would recommend about each of them. The uh, the, the original, 1976 yes. film. They got an amazing, amazing mm-hmm. cast for anybody who, who remembers. Yes. Charlton Heston and Henry Fonda and Robert Mitchum. And you just got this whole cast. Robert Wagner. You know, mm-hmm. Yeah, Robert Wagner mm-hmm. is, in that, is in that film. There's, uh, James Coburn. There's this, there's this whole. Uh, Hal Holbrook line. is Rocheford. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. That's right. Hal Holbrook's in the film. There's a whole lineup of, of superstars in, in this movie. And um, the thing I, the thing I really liked about the, the original, which I didn't see in 1976, I just saw it for the first time the other night, but mm-hmm. is the chess match. You know, the chess match. You, yeah. you, they 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 showing the Japanese high command. They're showing the American high command. You know, uh, and for the, for the Japanese, are these planes coming from Midway? Are these carrier? Are these carrier based planes? If so, how many carriers? Where are the carriers? What do we do? Do we attack Midway? Do we you know with 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 bombs or do we go after the American carriers with torpedoes because the planes have to be armed with different you know with different armaments and the chess match that you know the and this, and this isn't a chess is a game this isn't a game this is life and death for thousands and thousands yes. of uh, of people mm-hmm. high stakes life and death you know multi human beings involved chess match and the first the first movie shows that brilliantly going back and forth between the high commands trying to guess mm-hmm. you know trying to figure out what the other what the other side is going to do if where the attacks coming from you know from what direction i mean the pacific's a big ocean you could attack midway from different you know from different yes. directions and you know different degrees and everything and the chess match in the first movie is brilliant but what i like about the second movie is it follows the pilots you know yes. the guys who actually oh, more I mean, action. aerial definitely yeah, more action. aerial mm-hmm. 
the aerial combat scenes in the remake are stunning. Yeah. By 2019, yeah. the special effects existed to, to it's just, it's yeah. jaw dropping. The, the, the mm -hmm. aerial photography, the beauty of it, if you get past the horror of warfare and all these poor guys getting killed, the beauty of mm -hmm. it is stunning. The aesthetics in the, in the aerial combat scenes, and there's a lot of it in, in, in the 2019 remake, is absolutely staggering. And I strongly recommend it. But the, yeah, the heroism of the pilots, that's what I love about the 2019 film. So you were talking then Dick Best yeah. and those guys. And, and yeah, Best, Dick, you know, early on in the film, they show him making this high risk move oh, and yeah, they yeah, think he's, he's a hot he's, dog. Okay. He is. But of course it is. foreshadows him having, yeah, right. he is. And that's he's okay. A, if you're that talented. <laughs> Dick Best was an extraordinary pilot. He was an extraordinary yes. pilot. I have a couple of points I want to, you know, I remember, uh, Apollo 13, which, you know, we haven't, done a show on we did apollo 11 we got to do apollo 13 one day but in the, yeah, in the movie yeah, the ron, yeah the ron mm -hmm. the, yeah the ron howard film where what was in sometime in the 1990s 95 maybe tom hanks yes, played uh, jim lovell mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. I, and you remember the scene where you know uh, jim lovell's mother i think is telling her grandkids jim lovell's kids if, the they, did, if they made a washer right? machine that could fly my jimmy could fly that's the kind of pilot jim lovell was <laughs> That's the kind of pilot mm -hmm. Dick Best was. He's just, I don't know, some guys, yeah. it's just a tune to the machine. They could do things with the machine. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Chuck Yeager must have been that kind of kind of pilot. They could do mm -hmm. things. We, we did a hero show on Chuck Yeager. They could do things with the machine that mere mortals can't do. And Dick Best was was that kind of a pilot. And I, I got I to say, I could remember. And courageous, too, because that, oh it's God, one yes. thing to oh maneuver God. well, but to go into the heat of battle um and, and even right, the, the, right the first... down to the flight deck he right down to the flight yeah. deck practically the japanese yes. carrier before he dropped the bomb yeah <laughs> yeah yeah uh yeah because like that's I'm what it need that... yeah good I, right. i'm in the fourth grade i'm in the fourth grade and you know, i was always a hero worshiper so you know in the cookie cutter mentality of the public schools fourth grade what you're nine right first grade you're six first grade seven six so i'm nine years old in the fourth grade and I'm reading, yeah, I was always a bookworm. So, you know, I'm a very, I was I was a terrible math student. I was the world's worst math student, but mm -hmm. I was a very advanced reader. So I'm reading this, you know, adult history of the U.S. Navy, uh, you know, and I read it from cover to cover. I was fascinated by it. So at nine yeah. years old, when I saw the Midway remake in 2019 for the first time, I still remembered the names of these students. I remember the names, wow. Dick Best, Wade McCluskey, uh, George McCluskey, Gay, the guy yeah. who shot down and has the, has, he's, he's in the ocean. He's watching, he's watching the American yeah. planes finally, you know, yeah. bomb, you know, the carries Lindsay, mm -hmm. the, who, the, the heroic pilot who's killed the, the torpedo bomber. Was it William Lindsay? I, right. first time. I remember his name, Lindsay, who gets yeah. killed, you know, at, uh, in, in, in the battle. These guys were heroes. I mean, their courage, they, 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 against. Yeah withering fire the the losses that the american yes. flyers took and they, they, they even yeah. in movies the Jap in both movies the japanese commander even shakes his head and he said brave men you know he's sad brave men and that, that these guys have mm -hmm. to be killed you know but yeah yeah, yeah. was uh, uh, the, andy was dusty kleiss norm dusty kleiss was he one of them because he's actually not covered in the films but he hit three he had three hits Two of the carriers he like was one somewhat responsible for sinking them or immobilizing Is that right? them. He, well, I, yeah, so I he don't... has a book. Don't call me a hero. I think is the name of it. But Dusty uh, Kleiss, K L E I S. Oh, remember the name? Is... I'm surprised they didn't show him in the film. Me too. They Dick Best uh, me and, too. And... I, I I am as well. And but the so actually so if we look at the how do you sink a carrier? you know one of the one of the things with with because, difficulty yeah, <laughs> yeah but first of all the japanese were unprepared they did not expect they thought they would just go in there and trounce right. so they were not prepared they were unorganized their carriers were too far apart to communicate so here's where you talk we mentioned luck earlier luck. there was yeah, a luck. series of blunders that a lot of their munitions were on board of the deck and they were like you know, you just strike a match and they're all, they're right. all going to light because the, so they were unorganized and uh, not ready f for a counterattack. So they were, they were the, the classic, they can give a punch, but they couldn't take one, you know, and that's exactly why they succeeded in Pearl Harbor. But now you get somebody who's right. ready 
for a punch, you know, like uh, Mike Tyson, right? Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the, in the face. And right. now they, they now where are their plans? You know, where, where are your plans where the American uh, brain power, might, will is going against you? And here's this yeah. is what leads to right. You're exactly uh, right. Experienced. Experienced commanders will always say the plan is great until it hits the fog of battle and everything goes to goes to bleep and then and then you got to improvise and and you're right Rob there's yeah. a lot of luck here the the because the Japanese originally thought the attacks on them were coming from land based planes in Midway and so their planes were their bombers were equipped with bombs to go take out the runway yes. at Midway then they realized you know that these are carrier based planes they had to rearm they had to take off the bombs and arm them with torpedoes mm -hmm. and the American attacks come the uh, first way, the flurry of it. Yeah, relentless yeah. At American attacks from three carriers and from uh, land-based planes at Midway, one after another with the Japanese armaments all over the deck. They can't get their planes. They can't launch their mm -hmm. planes because they have to defend the, the carriers and the armaments are just exposed. And, you know, and, and when the American bombs strike, I mean, it's, one or two of those carriers just went up like a, you know, like it was the 4th of July. I mean, it's just, yeah. Boy, it's, mm -hmm. it's enormous ex explosions. And they, yeah, they, it's luck. Yeah, you know, timing, timing is every, timing is, oh, and then the, the, the zeros, the, the great Japanese fighter planes and their great fighter pilots were chasing, you know, uh, the survivors of, of the, of, of the Americans first attacks. And they didn't have the umbrella of fighter protection up above the carriers for the next wave of uh, you know right. of attacks. Like like you said, the American mm -hmm. attacks were relentless. Uh, you know, on relentless, the, on the efficient. Uh, it showed you know effectively by so it's all this is one day. This is June fourth. We're talking about here, June fourth, nineteen forty two, and from four thirty up until the 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 fourth carrier sinks at like nine seven p m uh, i mean it was just within a day just amazing yeah. amount of damage uh to the 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 military might to their will and uh yeah, and their you know, aura of invinci their aura of invincibility yes that that yeah and that their re and religious based aura of invincibility that's their destiny to rule mm -hmm. the pacific and it just got yeah obliterated yeah but yeah the first three yeah. carriers in the morning those relentless attacks uh and yeah. then take out take out three of the of the japanese carriers the japanese counterpunch takes out yorktown which was severely damaged York at coral sea it's amazing the americans were able to yorktown, get yorktown got hit everywhere battle. over and over again the yorktown <laughs> carrier got hit and they eventually it sunk but but i think uh the military went down and saw it still Still has the same paint job and and <laughs> it's it survived. I mean, it's not functional, but they, they actually went down and, and found it, and it's it's amazing. Yeah, Yorktown well, amazing, had been through a lot. Yeah, amazing that the Americans were able to get Yorktown into Midway, the battle in the first place, because it was heavily damaged yeah. at Coral Sea. The, the original yeah. estimate was what what three months in dry dock to get three it months. ready. Then they well, the five weeks, and and Nimitz tells them in the film anyway, you got seventy two hours. To get Yorktown out to sea, I don't care what he said. I don't care if your flight deck is done with plywood. He said, "I don't care." But Yorktown's <laughs> going to sail, and and and, and it's going to you know have, planes are going to land and you know are going to take off and land from Yorktown. Sure enough, you know, Yorktown yep. joins the fight. So that's for that's the yeah. third. American that reminded carry. me, Andy, of that's like an Atlas Shrugged scene when right there was this natural. They're build the building Reardon, um, the the Reardon Bridge, I think, and and there's like some natural disaster and they're and they're all making excuses oh we can't get there until for like three weeks wait a minute you want it done by the weekend <laughs> Rear's like right. get this thing back up and running by the weekend all right that's that i'm going to supply all the all the labor to do so and that that's what that scene reminded me of when he's like 72 right. hours okay 72 <laughs> hours yorktown sales and by god it did yeah <laughs> they did but uh yeah, they got, there's a, that's a heroic effort in and of itself uh, by the part of the machinists and the mechanics and you know mm -hmm. uh, the American uh, America America's workforce put to uh, every, you know every everything. Remember Rosie the Riveter? Uh, that's she, right. Yeah, the, yeah. the American mm -hmm. labor force, mm -hmm. American industry, everything was devoted to the to the war effort, which is why 
Yamamoto didn't want to go to war with the United States in the first place. The That's industrial right. capacity, yeah, the industrial capacity yeah. and the fighting spirit. He didn't want, he didn't want, he didn't want to fight this country. Why? Why? That's right. Anyway, well, the, so you the fighting of, yeah. spirit. Yeah, mm -hmm. the fighting spirit. Yeah, and, the, and... That's what I. That's what I love about uh, the 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 Midway remake. You really see the fighting spirit of the pilots. You know these yeah. guys. Uh, Dick Best, his friend, uh, what's his name? Eugene Dickinson. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know he and he pounds the table at breakfast in the morning, and Best is telling his guys, "Look, nobody thinks we can go toe to toe with the Japanese." Uh, yeah, so I personally, I I think you guys are, are better than anybody. And Dickinson pounds the table. He says, "We're gonna give him a shellac," you know. And he says, "He says, <laughs> you know." And these guys go out and, and and they do. He drops the bomb. I was it best? Yeah, I think it was best when he lands. Yeah. He drops the bomb on the fourth carries. That's for Pearl Harbor. You know, that's right. Also. That's right. Yeah. That kid, and even a scene yeah. earlier, Andy, if in the film, when Nimitz is first named and he's he's in the car, in the back seat of the car, yeah, right. and right. Best is the one who said, Come on, it's, let's go. When are we going to fight these guys? You know? Yeah, they're drunk. And, they've been and, out drinking all night. The right -hand right? They've man been out drinking like, all night. You, yeah, and he's like, do you, do you want his name and rank? <laughs> and Nimitz is like, no, I'd like to see that fighting spirit. You know, I yeah, mean, it's a, is just a 30-second yeah. scene, and it shows how important that was, that the leadership is willing. I mean, that's that's the main thing. When the leadership is willing to let the fighters fight, then yeah. there's now a, there's a, you know, all bets are off. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. You know, Robert, there's a scene in the, in the remake with that Italian kid, mm -hmm. Bruno's, I forget. I don't know yeah, if, it's, if it's, yeah, it's historically it's so accurate. Sad. Two scenes, yeah. two unforgettable scenes. First, yeah, when he saves. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Japanese ahead, bomb is it. doing a... Yeah, the Japanese yeah. bomb in that first one is there's no kamikaze attacks until 1945, but it's a kamikaze yeah. suicide. It's a suicide attack. The plane shot is going to crash onto the carrier deck. I think it's Enterprise, right? And he, this this young kid, mm -hmm. Bruno, I forget his last name, Italian kid from New York, I think, you know, like and he Gaudo jumps into, or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, something like that. Yeah, jumps into yeah. the cockpit of a plane on the deck, of, he fires away with the machine gun, blows blows the Japanese plane up and it just it just grazes the deck as it comes down uh mm -hmm. Halsey Halsey promotes him on the you know on the spot but the, the same just cocky cocky young kid you know and he's the planes he's a gunner on a plane they're shut down they're on a rep he's how are you you know and the, his his skip is telling him oh we're gonna dehydrate and all this stuff and he said we'll swim Bruno says we'll swim to Pearl and the, and the other guy says yeah good luck with the sharks and Bruno says well we need something to eat you know, so anyhow, like, you know, they're captured by the Japanese. Yeah, yeah the Japanese yeah. have this reputation for so brutality, sad. which was, yeah, was well earned. And they want to know, you know, mm -hmm. which ship are you from and everything. And Bruno's asked for a cigarette. He, he says, he's smoking his cigarette. And he says to him, he says, you know, I, he, he said, I have friends at Pearl Harbor. So why don't you go mm -hmm. bleep yourself? He said, you know, he didn't use the term yeah. bleep, but you can fill it. And, yeah. and they throw on oh, and suddenly you give us information and we throw you overboard. And they did with yeah. an anchor, as they killed the yes. nineteen year old or whatever. This that is this is not the proper way to treat POWs, to put it mildly. No, but, uh, no, but, but uh, yeah, it's, but that's a, all it's, accurate. It's a, that that is all accurate, Andy. What, but what I love about this scene is he demands a cigarette from them. Okay, <laughs> so he's yeah. basically saying, "You, you, I don't bow to you. You know, I know you're going to kill me, so I'm going out on my terms." Give me a cigarette before I die, you know, and they and they go like robots, you know, like put it in his mouth, light the match. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, a, just the one is, other it, nugget of heroism. Yeah, it's tremendously heroic and tremendously sad, all rolled up into yeah. one. This, this kid is so is such a hero. He's a kid. He should have his whole life mm -hmm. ahead of him, you know. And he's but he's not yeah. gonna he's not gonna give them the information that that they that they want. But yeah, mm -hmm. the, the movie is filled. The Midway remake is filled with these kinds of heroic scenes. And, and well, well, you know, if any hero worshiper, I think you're going to love, you know, I guess, yeah. now, of course, there's a I lot agree. of people, hero, hero worshippers, don't like violence and don't like war movies. I get that. So yeah, you have, yes. to, you have to understand this is a war movie. And oh my God, yeah. the, the death, you know, those, I was talking about those aerial combat scenes. Which are so spectacular, worth the price of admission just by themselves. Mm -hmm. but all these planes are coming down in flames. All these guys are you know dead or dying, you know. So it's really it's horrifying on the one hand, and yet it's so heroic and so beautifully choreographed mm -hmm. in the making of the 2019 remake. It's just 
it is yeah. really spectacular. But so if, so, we, so if the, we look at the 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 film again, as much we highly clearly we highly recommend the film, but we're always yeah both the heroes. Both so we're them. looking at the ideas underneath. Yeah, both both of yeah. them and. There's a ten part series called The Eagle versus the Sun uh, on the Pacific War. You can find that on Amazon for free. The, the uh, HBO has something called The Pacific, a ten part series that focuses more on the Marines after Pearl Harbor. So there's a lot of data out there on the heroes. Also, you know, Robert, when, when I was a, when I was a kid, early in early sixties. Mm -hmm. There was a, a a TV show that I must have gone back to the fifties because I used to watch it on reruns when I was like ten years old, and it was called Victory at Sea, and uh, yeah. you know it's you, you yeah. can still find it on YouTube, you know uh, mm -hmm. about, you know about the mm -hmm. the naval the the naval war in in the Second World War, and a large part of that was in the Pacific. So Victory, Vict I remember yes. growing up watching that stuff, all these heroes, you know, the U.S. Yeah. Navy. Uh, Victory at Sea, all those. Uh, YouTube is great, Robert. It, every, you can find it is for these lost, on YouTube. Lo yeah, yeah, these yeah. lost treasures. Yeah, you, so mm -hmm. Victory at Sea is yeah. still available. So when I was in Bulgaria, you know, there was not a lot of entertainment in Blagorovgrad, <laughs> Bulgaria. So you know, I, I I stayed in my office a lot at night and watched old TV shows that I liked it and found and found a lot of nice. these Victory at Sea episodes. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Brought me back mm -hmm. to when I was ten years old. But anyhow, so you right. talk about the ideas. Yeah, you talk about the ideas. So yeah, the just the ideas and the fact that it's mind over, you know, over muscle. Uh, John Hersey, who started the Hero Show with you, he has a short piece in TOS on that on that point that it was not just the Japanese were more about muscle and just bullying you, and the Americans with the code crackers. Uh, if we go to Rocheford, what was his? He, he had several great uh, points in, in real life. And, and one of them was, my job is to tell my superior today what the enemy will be doing tomorrow. Okay. And, and that takes <laughs> intelligence and, uh, you know, and planning and understanding. And of course, you know, knowing Japanese, imagine you know, how tough a, a word of Japanese, the, the, the language is, and pick, picking one out of every 10 words and finding the patterns. I, I mean, it's just brilliant intellectual work done uh, by that side. Hypo, H-Y-P-O, it was the name of the unit in the basement. Uh, real unsung stars that their stories came out later on and, and their impact. Uh, but the American, the ideas of America, that liberty and freedom and industrialism, these are human life, the value of human life. Just compare, how did the Americans treat the Japanese prisoners compared to the flip side? I, I mean, yeah. and, and oh, yeah. I liked how you set the context, Andy, because today when we think about Japan, everybody Japanese, I, I have so much respect for, for my Japanese friends, but I would not think I couldn't think they would ever be capable of what their culture, many of the people in their culture were doing in, yeah. in the 1930s uh, and horrible. 40s. And, and that is due to American influence, which again, we're going to yeah. do a separate episode on that whole point. But so just co coming yeah. to and primarily, Ridley, primarily due yeah, to baseball, right? baseball. That's the that's what <laughs> Americanized. Sadahara O. <laughs> Remember him, Andy? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, the Babe Ruth, the Babe Ruth of, of Japan. <laughs> But seriously, no, seriously, right. you're, 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 you're absolutely, you're absolutely right. It, th this was a brutal religion-based military dictatorship. So it, the, the yeah. combination of, of brutal dictatorship and faith-based religion mi militates against independent thinking. You just follow orders. Uh, whereas yes. the United States was, was a, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. The United States mm -hmm. circa 1940. Who is is still a very free country? Even today, it is to some degree, but certainly more so eighty years ago. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and so the, you know, you can see the Americans acting independently. Nimitz, we we already showed one example disregarding Washington. Washington doesn't doesn't give them commands, fortunately, but disregarding Washington's yes. advice and recommendations to to trust his code breakers, to trust Layton and Rocha. Yeah. You know, shows mm -hmm. your real independent judgment on the on the mm -hmm. part of them it's, yeah and you're right the the american the americans generally treated pow's vastly better than the japanese did uh there may be isolated ex examples where where it wasn't the case you know, like in, in mm -hmm. europe 
there were cases where uh, Americans just mowed down. But they're individual that's, cases. That's, they're in. I think yeah. they're more individual yeah. cases. No, yeah. It's uh, not no, the right. mindset. It's not, Ameri it's not American policy. It's not American policy to, to kill. Right, and especially if you see your buddy blown up by a guy who has a hand grenade, and you know you're trying to help him your friend goes to help him and then he blows you up with a hand grenade you're going to be angry at that uh, you know oh, at oh, yeah. that group yeah, that has just killed your buddy you know who oh, is absolutely. trying to try, trying to help somebody uh, who, who's in danger so absolutely but absolutely coming back to the post uh, the effect of midway so what does it do it turns the tide literally turns the tide yeah. of the war oh, absolutely now Japanese is, Japan is not invincible. They have they, their carriers are done, so they now can't. They cannot be effective on the vast Pacific Ocean. Uh, a fraction, in fact, they're the rest of the war. Effectively, they are on the defensive. They are no. Yes. They no longer make an right. offensive assault, victorious offensive assault, and the it's one only, of the main uh, important. I'm just thinking. Let I'm, me just say this. I don't remember the history. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, the, the main thing is now America can put the the bulk of its effort to the European front, okay? Like because now they're not bogged down with uh, Japan is going to fight you know three more solid years and it's going to take two two nuclear bombs for them to uh, finally surrender. But a bulk of the American effort now can be directed towards the European theater uh, due to the victory at midway that changed the balance of the yeah, Pacific you know, War. Right. That's yeah, absolutely true. I'm just trying to remember, I should have looked this up beforehand. I'm, uh, I apologize, I did not. But I mm -hmm. think the, the, the Marines landed at Guadalcanal only a few months after the victory at midway, after. wasn't it the summer of 42? Yes, after. after yeah, yeah yes. like August of 42 maybe, which is just two months, just two months later, the Americans yep. are taking the offensive in the Pacific War. And you're right, the Japanese are playing defense uh ever ever after until the, until the bitter end you know at, yep. uh, at hiroshima and nagasaki uh and there's a couple of mm -hmm. points you know about the american spirit after uh, you know uh, the secretary of the navy i forget his name offhand when he's telling them it's this is shown in the in the second the second movement i assume this is accurate uh that you your fdr handpicked you he wants you you know for this job and 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 he's telling them it's Things in the Pacific are worse than we're saying publicly. The Japanese have nine carriers or something. We have three. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They just have. Mm -hmm. they, they completely. They they have far more equipment than us, and their equipment is far more modern and far better than ours, yeah. which is which is outdated. This this is like the toughest Chester, you know, Chester Nimitz. You use the toughest job in in the world. But FDR wants you to command the Pacific Fleet. How long until you sail your ships into Tokyo Harbor? <laughs> you, mm. know, you know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. until he's very confident that no matter how how long and tough and bitter this war is, we're going to win. We're going to win it. Yeah. And I wanted to say about American philosophy because you mentioned the ideas. The great, mm -hmm. the late great John John David Lewis had a quote. I think it was from FDR. You know uh, mm -hmm. about you know who our enemies were in World War Two. He said I don't remember the exact wording, but something like. We have to defang the predatory animals of the world, yes. <laughs> yeah. which is absolutely right, 100%. given our enemies, mm -hmm. yeah, the Nazis and Imperial Japan. But, you know, later on, the communists were just as bad and the jihadists are just as bad. Can you imagine anybody in the United States, any any president saying that today? We have to defang, you know, we're going to destroy ISIS and we're going to destroy the Taliban and say we're going to defang the predatory animals of the world or you know, the predatory mm -hmm. creatures. I don't remember with the, nobody nobody in the united states would have the moral courage nobody prominent would have the moral courage to say it's that a shame today. that's yeah that that's why they're called the greatest generation you know that era they had the will and they had the due to industrialism they also had the might brought on in mm -hmm. time so another thing about midway was the best here here's the gamble japan took they had all their best their best pilots their best mechanics their be the best of the best were all here and they were gone and and so now you have to take second rate people second rate victims to to go and die for their country yeah, yeah. and that was similarly a a, a pivotal you know right. uh, psychological a, uh right there's a sad scene in the in the re in the remake 
film. Mm -hmm. these, these top Japanese pilots are returning, you know, from bombing uh, Midway, and the carriers, the three the carriers are burning. The three, the three carriers are burning. The pilot is looking at his fuel gauge, and he's he's down and empty. And he's got no place to land. Yeah. So he's going to have yeah. to ditch, you know, in the in the Pacific. Maybe he'll survive. Maybe mm -hmm. he won't. Maybe he'll get picked up by a destroyer, or another. maybe he won't. Plane's gone. Maybe the pilot. You know, is 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 gone. You're you're right. Japan took a major gamble at Midway, and and due to a number of factors, you know, uh, mm -hmm. American code breaking, the heroism of the pilots, luck. You know, due to a number of factors, they they lost spirit, they, the will, yeah, American mm -hmm. spirit. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. I and I, again, another thing I want to say um, to recommend the the second Midway movie. Is at the end of that movie, mm -hmm. they kind of freeze the frame on these heroes, and the and they, the graphics are tell their story. The yeah. yeah, what happens? By the way, I have the Dick Best. You know, gets at, at Midway, where he's a major hero. He helps. He help, uh, you know bomb you know several of the Japanese carriers. Um, he gets bad bad air supply. You know, in when when he when he right. first takes off, it, it mm -hmm. corrodes his lungs. I think he was treated after that for tuberculosis. Uh, he never flew again after Midway. This great pilot, mm -hmm. one of the great pilots and mm -hmm. great heroes in U.S. naval history, never flew again. Had to be treated for tuberculosis. I don't know if he would have had tuberculosis anyway, or if the the bad air supply he was getting corroded his lungs to the point we came down with TB. But the amazing thing about Dick Best is he still lived to be ninety years old. <laughs> Dick, yeah, Dick Best, yeah. Dick Best, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and and you know, mm -hmm. Wayne McCluskey, you know, this this show, you know, you know, who is the commander of of, of the mm -hmm. squadron here. Their and relation said, in the movie is is really poignant. The way yeah. they butt heads and then they resolve it uh, in the film. I, yeah, I thought right. that I thought that was really yeah, well was, told. Was, so yeah. these are names, Andy McCluskey, yeah, I, Nimitz. Uh, th these should be household names. These should be yeah. people that we're reading about. Halsey, uh, Best, um, Layton, yeah, yeah. Roseford, uh, th and yeah, many more. We're not covering just so just so you know. Right. Many we're not right. too many yeah, and, for one you know specific and bull, episode. And bull, but, and certainly bull, bull Halsey also. But yes. you know they showed yeah. that those graphics at the end of the of the second Midway yeah. film that to this day the 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 Navy's best attack squadron gets the Wade McCluskey award uh amazing yeah. what's his name yeah. dick mm -hmm. best buddy from the from the from annapolis uh yeah, yeah dickinson clarence dickinson uh mm -hmm. what, what, what he, he he went on to become an admiral degree became an admiral in the u.s navy uh who, who else um I, I there was one of the other one of the other pilots i remember be, be, was it mccluskey they ascended what, what they, they you know they i right again yeah. the names i'm not some of the names I focused on over this past week in, in studying, and and th again, there's too many, but the heroism, this is why we recognize, this is why we think about it today, December 7th, you know, or December 9th, actually, when this will air, but we think about the result and the counterpunch, okay? Yeah. Uh, Japan was a bully that sucker punched us December 7th, 1941. America woke up, recovered, was staggered for a couple of months, and then put the mind sure. and muscle together. <clears throat> for sure. And you're right. It's a good boxing analogy. And then through the counterpunch, devastating counterpunch yeah. at Midway that didn't mm -hmm. knock Japan out. Japan was way too powerful to be knocked out by one, you know, one major defeat, yeah. but staggered, staggered Japan and put them on the defensive for the rest of the war. Yeah. And because Chicago was a big part of tra a transportation hub in America, right at that time, the, after the battle, they renamed their airport. That's why Chicago's airport is is called Midway. It's due, it's due to due to that. Uh, oh, is battle. that right? I didn't know and that. That's okay. Yeah, All right. that's the referent. Yeah, that's that's the referent right. uh, there. And so, Did not know that to all the heroes of Midway, you know, we say we say thank you for turning turning the tide. Yeah, I want to, we're going to salute. We, we we need to yes. salute the U.S. Navy here, the U.S. Navy pilots. Yes. Uh, what's, mm -hmm. what's, uh, I, I don't know, but I've been told. What was it? I don't know, but it's been said. Air Force wings <laughs> are made of lead. I don't know, but it's been told. 
Navy wings are made of gold, right? <laughs> That's from the okay. officer, the gentleman. Yeah, the, you remember? You know, the, well, nice. They, you know, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah, the rivalry <laughs> between the branches. Obviously, U.S. Air Force pilots are superb. But you know, yes. your pride, pride in the U.S. Navy pilots. Who between, but who, you'll never win when you put the, our friends John and Jim. One's Air Force, one's Navy, and that's a different. That's a different topic. Yeah, Let's just put it that yeah. way. Yeah, but one thing, one thing <laughs> they're say all about great. The Navy, yeah, yeah, absolutely right. The Navy pilots land, take off, and land on aircraft carriers in a small deck, middle of the ocean. The ship may be rolling in heavy seas. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh -huh. not saying the Air Force pilots can't do it, but the Navy pilots, the Navy pilots do. And it's, uh, you know, yep. it is uh, it is amazing that what, 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 what these guys do. But anyway, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank God. Heroes of Midway, or, or, thank you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Heroes, mm -hmm. survivors of Pearl Harbor and, and Heroes of Midway, thank you. Yes. Uh, I think we can all be inspired yeah. by this, Robert, you know, to go on. Yeah. And uh, let me wish you and everybody out there in Hero Land, because it is Pearl Harbor Day today, as we're filming this. Yeah. This is December 7th, mm -hmm. the 80th, 80th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. It's and sad. so, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's very sad. It's very sad. Mm -hmm. But uh, but we can say America rebounded uh, from this. And the, and the first major blow the Americans threw. At Japan and, and hopefully wars. America yeah. as a country ourselves can rebound to to what we're dealing with right now as well. That's one of, one of our hopefully. goals here in the Hero Show. Mm -hmm. a a absolutely, inspire Americans to be the heroes that we've mm -hmm. seen so many yes. in the past, like George Washington, all the way through mm -hmm. uh, Midway, military heroes, mm -hmm. intellectual heroes like Franklin and Jefferson and people like that. Hopefully, you know, mm -hmm. America can rebound from the the mess that we're in today yeah. so again i think we should one more salute robert to the u.s one more navy, it's military, one more so. salute, US, navy <laughs> yeah. u.s military uh navy pilots right. thank you and i wish everybody to have, a, have a heroic day and, and let's try and lead more heroic lives everybody we'll yep. see you next week on the hero show <laughs>